Well kids, we are continuing with the chapter 7. Can you see the pattern? Now, you already know what is whole turn. You are aware of half turn. And you are also very well aware of quarter turn. So today, the last turn that you learn about is 1 8 turn. Now before I explain this 1 8 turn, let me tell you one thing. Just observe this. This is one whole circle. Fine. Now, two halves make one whole. Or I can say half is equal to half of whole. Fine. Now, the next thing that I write is one fourth is equal to half of half. That means this half is also required to be divided into halves like this. So what do I get? I get one fourth. Clear? Similarly I write that one eighth is equal to half of a quarter or half of one fourth. If I divide this quarter into two equal parts, this quarter is also divided into two equal parts. I divide this quarter also into two equal parts and this also into two equal parts. Now, what fraction will you write for one part? It will be 1 by 8. Why? There are 8 equal parts and we have taken 1 part out of those 8 equal parts. So, if you understand this relation, you will learn about these positions also. So, 1 eighth is equal to half of 1 fourth. Clear? That is why in 1 fourth term we were doing like this. That the positions were top, right, bottom, left. Clear? So, in 1 eighth, there will be four more positions between them. Half of them. So top is there. Then there is a position which is exactly between top and right. Then it's right. Then there is a position between right and bottom which is here. Then we have bottom. Then we have another position which is between bottom and left. Here it is. Then we have left. Thereafter we have one more new position which is between left and top. Fine. And finally the top. Okay, beta? So, let's do this everybody. If there is an object which is pointing towards the bottom like this. So, where will it point if I ask you to give it one eighth turn clockwise? It will point between bottom and left. This is how it will appear. Give it one more, one eighth turn, it will point towards the left. So what did you observe? From bottom to left, how many one eighth turn were required? Two one eighth turn. So that is why I have written here, one eighth turn is equal to half of one fourth turn. Or I can say that two one eighth turns make one quarter turn. So, if I ask you to give it one more one eighth turn, where will it point? Between left and top. Give it one more one eighth turn, it will point towards the top. Give it one more one eighth turn, it will point between top and right. Give it one more one eighth turn, it will point towards the right. Give it one more one eighth turn, it will point to between right and bottom. Give it one more one eighth turn, it will come back to its original position. So, eight one eighth turns will be equal to one whole turn. I hope you are very well aware of these four new positions. Between top and right, between right and bottom, between bottom and left, between left and top. Have you all understood? Now if you do the same thing anti-clockwise, 
Let's say that the object was pointing towards the left first of all. This was its original position. Give it one eighth turn anti-clockwise. So we will not move like this, like the movement of the clock, hands of the clock. We will move in the opposite direction. So from left we will move to bottom and right. From bottom and right we will move to bottom. From bottom we will move to between right and bottom. Then from here we will move to right. From here we will move to bottom and sorry top and right. From here we move to top. Then from here one more one next turn we will take the object between left and top. Then one more one eight turn will bring it back to its original position which is left. I hope this is clear to everybody. Have you all understood one, what is one eighth turn? Now let's understand this concept with the help of an example. Let's take letter A. And I ask you to give it one eighth turn clockwise. How will this object appear after one eighth turn? And for clockwise I write C. So A will point between top and right. If I ask you to give it one more one eighth turn clockwise. So the object A will point towards the letter A will point towards the right side. Have you understood? So this is how we turn the objects. Give it one more one eighth turn. It will point between right and bottom like this. You give it one more one eighth turn. It will point towards the bottom this way. So this is how an object moves after one eighth turn clockwise. Now let's take one more example and this time we are going to turn it anti-clockwise. One eighth turn anti-clockwise. Okay, I have taken, let's say ma'am has taken 2, the number 2. So give it one eighth turn anti-clockwise. This object or this digit will point between top and left. Why? Because we are giving it one eighth turn anti-clockwise. For anti-clockwise ma'am has written AC. Fine. So how will it look better? Between between top and left. So this is the position. Clear? Give it one more one eighth turn anti-clockwise. So the object this digit 2 will point towards the left. Give it one more one eighth turn anti-clockwise. The object will point between bottom and left. That is this position. Give it one more one eighth turn. It will point towards the bottom like this. Have you all understood or not? So, Vita, these were the turns you learnt about. The first turn was whole turn or you can say complete turn or full turn. Second was half turn. Then third one was quarter turn. And next was three fourth turn. And last is one eighth turn. So, revise these concepts with various objects so that you are able to understand each and every turn